Hey guys, Caleb here with DSLR Video Shooter. If you're tired of hearing about all these new cameras that are rather expensive, this is the video for you. We're gonna look at 10 cameras under $300. Quick side note, in the description, I'll link to each one of these cameras. Those will be affiliated, so they do help out the channel if you use them at no additional cost to you. If you don't want any cameras and you just wanna watch the video and have a good time, but still wanna support the channel, check out my guides over at the Academy. You can learn more about filmmaking, uh, using your camera, and getting the most out of it for a video. With all that out of the way, let's jump into today's video and talk about these 10 cameras. Now, I did have a specific criteria when I started planning this video. All of the cameras we're about to look at had to be at $300 or below, and that had to be a normal price or a buy it now price on eBay. I didn't want any special crazy deals to cheat, if you will. So all these cameras you should be able to find for $300 or less on eBay right now. Another criteria I had was that each of these cameras had to be able to shoot 1080p at 24 frames per second to get the most cinematic look out of them, which is surprisingly difficult to find, especially back in the day. So all these cameras have those specs at a minimum. Let's go ahead and dive in and start with Sony, of which there are four options on this list. Our very first camera is this, the Sony 5N. I actually owned this when it first came out, and at the time it was incredibly revolutionary. I paid a little over $100 for this camera. It shoots at 28 megabits a second, so pretty typical for these style cameras from Sony. It has an APS-C sensor, which is pretty great, and you'll notice here it's got a flip up, but not all the way up and out uh, monitor, so not really gonna work terribly well for vlogging, and it's very, very small. It does not have a microphone jack, but it does give you an HDMI feed, albeit not clean, but you can use a monitor with it, and that's how I used it back in the day. This was a really popular camera when it first came out. It also has some great little video features like focus peaking, which is really handy, and that was pretty revolutionary back in the day when all we had was Canon DSLRs. So a great little camera. It does have some issues, including overheating. So if you're gonna be shooting more than small clips, you might run into some issues there. I know I did back in the day. And the video quality isn't the best of our whole list here, but this is one of the most affordable cameras on the list. So it's a great little camera if you wanna run around and capture some video. Our next camera is the Sony A5000. Now this is almost identical to the previous camera, except it has more megapixels and updated UI, and we have a fully flipping forward screen, which makes it great for a super budget-friendly entry-level vlogging camera. Now, this thing I paid around $185, I believe, for, and uh, very, very similar. It's just we're getting a couple updates, the flip-out screen, a better screen, a new UI, which is familiar to those of you who shot with the A6300. It's a great little camera, and I've actually done a video on it. So if you wanna learn more about this camera, check out that video, and I talk about using it for vlogging and things like that. Our next camera is also a Sony, and it is the A5100, which was an update to the camera we just talked about, the A5000. But it's been updated, so it's much higher quality. And unlike all the previous cameras, this camera actually has XAVC-S, as a codec option, which is so much better than AVC HD. So a great little camera, even today, if you're using it for stills or video, it's a wonderful little 1080p camera. You can shoot up to 1080p 60 like the other Sony cameras, it's just gonna be a better all around, highest quality Sony option on this list. So awesome little camera, highly recommend checking it out. But do keep in mind, it's at the top of our price pile at $299, which is what I spent on this one. Our next camera, once again, is a Sony, and we're taking a slight step back and looking at the NEX6. Now, this camera is older than the A5100 we just looked at, but it gives you a different body style, so a little more beefed up, it's gonna overheat less, and then we have an EVF, so if you need to be shooting outdoors, you can now do that without using the screen. It has the really terrible uh, flip up, but not all the way front facing monitor. We've seen these with current Sony cameras, except for the A6400 but I digress. And it's pretty much identical in all ways to the A5000 and 5N. So we're going back to AVC HD, but it is a little more affordable. I got mine for 190 bucks, so pretty good for under 200 bucks. So that's gonna wrap up Sony cameras. Now we're moving over to Canon land, and we're gonna start with the famous EOS-M from Canon. I've owned several of these cameras in the past, 
and they're phenomenal. This camera is one of the cheapest on the list. I got mine for $145. You can get different colors, how fun. And uh, it has an APS-C sensor. I would definitely recommend picking up an EF adapter like this cheap one I have here so you can use really any lens on the camera. And you're really not gonna go wrong with this camera. I've done a video on it and a couple little rig setups and some budget-friendly lenses. So I'd recommend you check that out if you're getting started and really wanna maximize shooting video on this guy. Now we are kind of taking a step back when it comes to some video specs compared to some of the Sony cameras. We're only able to shoot up to 1080p 30 frames per second but the color is amazing on this camera compared to those older Sony's and you are able to install Magic Lantern which is a really great hack and gives you a ton of flexibility with this tiny little camera. So definitely one to consider. Very small, no flip up screen at all. It's fixed on the back so that's a big bummer uh, but you can use HDMI to get uh, a different angle. While this camera doesn't have any assist features unless you hack it, it does have a microphone jack, which is pretty rare on this list. I think there's only two or three cameras that actually have that, and this one has one, so really nice little feature and a solid little camera. Next up, we have another Canon camera, and this is actually the only DSLR on this list, and it is the famous T2i. Now I will say, depending on what condition you get, you could potentially get up to around a T4i with a flip out screen and better video specs for under $300, something to keep in mind. But when I started this video, this was the camera under $300 at the time. The T2i, I got it for a little over $150, I believe. And it's a little bigger than all the rest because it's a DSLR, but this thing's a trooper. I mean, so many of us shot with this thing back in the day when we got started. So you're getting 1080p 30, very similar specs to the EOS M, uh, but it's a little bigger and, you know, different processor, stuff like that. So still a contender tender and these things last forever so you can probably pick up uh, a pretty beat up one for not too much and it'll still work on eBay. Our next camera is a crazy famous one for independent filmmakers back in the day and that is the Panasonic GH2. This camera still has pretty decent specs if you're looking at 1080p. We can shoot up to 30 frames per second and what's special about this camera is it has one of the highest data rates of all the cameras we're looking at today. So you can shoot at 120 megabits a second in 1080p at 24 frames per second, which is just great if you're getting started. So prices vary on this guy, but you can usually find it for under 260 bucks. It has a flip out screen. It has a headphone jack, albeit a 2.5 millimeter, which is kind of weird. And there's also a ton of hacks available for this camera. So if you wanna kind of mod it, customize it to get the most out of it, you can do that. I will say that it feels ancient when you go into the menu system. It is touch and it has a lot of features, but it really looks old when you start diving into the menu. So great little camera. If you're really a fan of Panasonic, you might as well check this guy out and uh, you'll have a lot of fun with it. And next up, we have another Panasonic camera. This is the Panasonic GX7. Now, this is one of the most expensive cameras on this list. I got mine for $290. Uh, it's also one of the most advanced and best video quality cameras of the list here. So we can record up to 1080p 60, unfortunately in AVC HD. There is no microphone jack and there is no HDMI display when shooting with video. So keep that in mind. It does have some really cool features when it comes to the body. First of all, it just looks great. It's got a really cool silver and black color scheme unless you go with the all black. It has a, unfortunately, only halfway flipping up screen, but it's very, very sturdy. It's got a ton of knobs and dials on it, which I I love. And then a cool party piece if you shoot video, the EVF, which this camera has, uh, actually tilts up. So you can see here, you can essentially look straight down at the camera's EVF and get some low angles, which is really, really handy if you're outdoor in the sun. So it's a great looking camera with really respectable video specs for under 300 bucks. Our last two cameras are gonna get pretty weird, so stay with me. The first is going to be the Samsung 
NX2000. Now I'll say right away, there's also an NX1000, an older version, and they're pretty similar. It's just this one has a massive touch screen and almost everything is touch. Whereas the NX1000 is a little older and has more buttons on it. Now this camera people are either going to love or hate. It won't shoot as good video as the other cameras, although it does do up to 1080p, quote unquote, at 30 frames per second. The data rate is really low at 12 megabits a second. But what I love about this camera is two things. Number one, it just feels great and it's really fun to shoot stills with. The second thing is that it is the most fun to shoot video with from a shooting experience. So if I turn it on here, we'll notice on the back of the camera, there's a massive display, which is awesome and much larger than most cameras. And when you shoot video specifically 1080p at 24 frames per second, it actually will shoot it at a different resolution, but it's widescreen. So 1920 by I believe 810. And that looks so fun when you're filming. And even when you get the footage in, in post, it's a lot of fun and it looks really, really good. So if you just want to knock around camera that is going to be fun to shoot with and gives you kind of a cinematic look out of the camera, this is a great one to consider. It does require mostly touch to change your settings. It has a micro SD instead of SD card slot. There is no HDMI out, but it's a lot of fun and I really enjoyed using this camera. Our next camera is a very odd one, but I've really had fun with it and it's a little more specialty and that is the Pentax QS1. The first thing you'll notice is how absolutely tiny this camera is. I mean, there's almost nothing to it. And the sensor on this is even smaller. It sports a minuscule 7.44 by 558 millimeter sensor. Here's what that looks like when you compare it to 35 millimeter. And if you're a crop kind of guy, this will give you a 5.6 times crop compared to full frame. Now, why would I put this camera on this list? Well, one of the reasons is how adorable it is and small it is. You can literally stick this in your pocket and walk around, take some photos. It does shoot raw. It's a great little stills camera. And because of that small sensor, you can use some really interesting lenses for video. We'll come back to that here in a second. It does shoot 1080p at 30 frames per second, but this video quality really isn't much to write home about, but it can do 1080p. But going back to that sensor size, you'll notice I have a really weird looking lens on the camera right now. This is actually an eight millimeter film camera lens on this camera. It's one of the only cameras that can actually shoot with these lenses. So you can buy an old film camera, take the lenses off and put them on this camera and shoot stills and shoot video. If you want a really retro look, right out of the camera, you can actually shoot in the VGA mode on this camera. And with these lenses and all the fun film filter looks that you can assign to this slick little dial here, you can get an amazing eight millimeter film look right off of this camera. You're definitely not gonna get the best video quality out of this compared to the other cameras, but it's one of the most fun to shoot on. And if you enjoy lenses and vintage stuff, you're gonna love this thing. Eight millimeter lenses or C mount 16 millimeter lenses, pair wonderfully with this thing. And it's just a fantastic combination. So those are all the cameras that I found under $300. To recap things very quickly, the Pentax Auto 10 is awesome for using tiny lenses and getting really unique looks and shooting raw stills, but not the best by any means for video quality. Same with the Samsung NX2000. It's lots of fun to shoot on, but you're not gonna get high quality video off of it. In Canon land, we looked at the EOS M and the T2i, both are gonna give you good looking 1080p, a little soft, not as many features compared to the other cameras, but still phenomenal in today's market, and you can hack them with Magic Lantern. The Panasonic GH2 is a great indie filmmaker camera if you're really into high quality video for almost nothing, and the GX7 is one of the most well-rounded of all the cameras we looked at when it comes to quality, having all these features that are really handy when shooting video, and it looks awesome. And finally, in Sony land, there's a lot of options under $300. In short, they're all very similar and they all shoot 1080p 60, but I would recommend trying to go for that A5100 for the highest video quality possible. But if you need the EVF, the NEX6 is also a good option. That wraps up this video. Check out the links in the description if you wanna learn more about these cameras or find them on eBay. That does support me since those are affiliated. And if you think there is a camera that I missed that should have been on this list, let me know. I'd love to hear about that or really any camera that maybe you started with back in the day that we can recommend to other people down in the comments. 
that's going to wrap this one up. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.